Welcome back to another session of Gears Line Following Challenge. I'm Yoni, and the last time we left off, I showed you how to do a robot that would stop whenever it got off the line and saw completely white space. Today, we're going to look at how to move through the entire line using a simple two state line following algorithm using a single color sensor. We're going to start with our robot in the same position uh, at the beginning of a, of a line on one side of the table, the color sensor pointing directly down at uh, the area of the line itself. And we're going to be using the edge of the line. Uh, remember, uh, when we see white, we're pointing towards the line. When we see black, we point away from the line. So we're really tracing the edge of the line, not the line. It's the, not the middle of the line or not the center of the line itself. And we'll be doing that through all these curves and up until we get to the end of the table. Uh, and I said it would be fine if your robot was programmed to just continue forever, which means it'll fall off the table and that will be when you successfully uh, follow the line. Now, if you just tell your robot to go forward, of course, you're, if the simple goal was to just fall off the table at this point, uh, you could just do that by just driving forward the whole time but we want to see the robot actually following these curves. So for now, let me just first show you what you know that algorithm would, would look like from the just viewing the robot, how it behaves. So you can see the robot is jitterily moving uh, back and forth, you know, away from the line, towards the line, away from the line, towards the line. If you notice, it's doing a, sort of a rotation around one of the wheels. That's what it looks like at least. Um, so, uh, you know, that gives you a clue as to maybe what kind of s speeds I'm using for each wheel, for each uh, rotation. And there's only two types of movements. There's either move towards the left and move towards the right. Um, and then when it gets to the end, it'll just uh, gracefully fall off the table uh, and into the infinite abyss. That's what it should look like. Um, so now let's look at what kind of code we need to build that with. At the end of our last session, I left you with this basic control loop. There was a repeat while true, which is the same as saying do whatever is inside this forever. Forever do what's inside here. And then the first thing uh, to do is to check every time you go into that control loop is to check the reflected light intensity. Now, before we were trying to stop on uh, when the surface is completely white and the color intensity, the light intensity returns 100. But now we're going to try to follow the edge of the line. So what we want to see is uh, whether the line is greater than or less than 50, let's say, which is sort of when the light sensor is right on the edge. Half of it is seeing the line and half of it is seeing the white surface. And um, what we want to do is to decide on which side of the line uh, we're tracking, which edge of the line we're tracking. If we are tracking the right edge of the line, then when we see white, we want to turn into the line towards the left. And when we see the line itself, the black area, we want to move away from the line towards the right. Conversely, if we are tracking the left edge of the line, then whenever we're in the white space, we want to turn right into the line and left away from the line when we see a low intensity or black area. So basically either way you're going to pick a, you're going to have to pick a side of the line to track and it doesn't really matter at this point which side. So now we go back to our algorithm. Uh, let's say we're tracking the right hand the right hand side of the line. When we see the white space we want to move into the line. So that means when we see greater than 50, uh, which is the more uh, white area, uh, white uh, color area, then we want to turn left. How do we turn left? Well, we can use something like, uh, you know, make my right speed higher than my left speed, and I will start rotating towards the left. Uh, if we want to experiment to see, you know, what this looks like in the simulator, then we can just run that by itself and see that indeed you know, this is this will be the motion that the robot takes whenever it sees the white area. Conversely, if we wanted to move away from the line towards the right, 
then we can just reverse the speeds on the left wheel to be higher than the right the right wheel and we'll see that that indeed turns towards the right okay so uh, now that we have a uh, very basic motion blocks we can you know complete our algorithm if the line is is uh, if, if we are off the line and we see a white area, then we want to move back to the left towards the line. Else, if we didn't see something greater than 50, we must have seen uh, intensity le less than 50. That means we're moving towards the middle of the line and we want to go towards the edge again or further out to the white space. Then we'll want to use uh, a right hand turn and we'll make our left wheel speed up. And that's it. That's pretty much our uh, entire algorithm. Notice that I'm using the most basic of blocks. I'm not saying I want to move tank um, with a certain number of rotations or degrees or time. Uh, any of those things will actually uh, lower the efficiency of this uh, of, of this algorithm because uh, you know it, you will move a certain amount of time or distance before you check again this means we're always checking so we'll get the most uh, sensor uh, uh, checks with this and this is what uh, the robot will look like so um, you know it's moving pretty fast so you can see that it moves immediately away from the line because we know we start with intensity of roughly two. So we're moving away from the line, but as soon as we hit the white space, we're trying to go back to the line, but we've moved so far, so fast away that we move back uh, with a pretty sharp angle. By the time we catch up with the line and we try to move away again, uh, you know, we're not moving sharply enough away and we cross the line. Now, once you cross the line, there's really no turning back anymore your algorithm is no longer um, in full control because being in the wrong side of the line how do you know which edge you know which side of the edge you're uh, trying to track any longer uh, once you've moved to this side you know if you're tracking this edge you're actually tracking it in reverse uh, because you're always tracking the right hand side of the line with this algorithm that I've created so we can see that uh, you know this is not the we can see that we're following the line a little bit but we're making a lot of errors and eventually you know our robot kind of goes out of control and is no longer doing anything well um, we can try to slow things down a bit just to see uh, maybe we can see what's happening better or maybe it'll improve our um, our our algorithm and maybe it will improve our algorithm. And we can just do this by you know, slowing things down a bit. Uh, we can even slow it down by half. This would be by uh, a third and, or by quarter. And this could, uh, we could do this by a half by setting this to 20 and this to 10. Before it was 40 and 20. Now our speeds are 10 and 20. And when we run this, um, you know, it's basically a slow motion version of pretty much the exact same thing we were doing before we can still see that we're falling off the lines in the same locations uh, as we did earlier uh, let's start that one last time so you can see clearly okay we're moving away towards away and then we're falling off to the right hand side And then we fall off to the left-hand side, and then where it got just confused, then we'll, you know, it'll be hard for us to really get back to, to where we want it to be. Even if, if it gets back to the line, it's now thinking that it's, um, it, it still thinks that it's on the left side of the line. That's where I left it. And, uh, you know, now we're on the right-hand side of the line. So the left side of the line would be for it. It means the robot would actually try to go back towards this way. Still no good. So uh, clearly we're not doing something right. Uh, maybe we're turning too sharply. We can try to turn less sharp by maybe uh, slowing it down further by changing the the speed so that it's only 1.5 faster on one ha on one side. That would make the the movement uh, a bit a bit less sharp. So every time we move towards the left, we're actually moving um, 
at a, at a wider angle. And every time we move towards the right, we're moving at a, right, a wider angle. Okay, so this would trace maybe a larger circle. And uh, we can try that to see if that works out. So again, now we're, if, if the area is white, we're moving towards the right, which means we're tracking the left edge of the line. Uh, if we wanted to change it again, we can just reverse these, and now we're tracking the right-hand side of the line. Okay, we're back on the line uh, with a, a, a slightly wider angle tracker. And we can see that we have pretty much the same problem where we cross the line at some point because we're not able to uh, quickly uh, correct our error of which, which way we're going. So that suggests maybe that we're not, we're not sharp enough. We're not turning sharply enough because we're not able to quickly uh, uh, get, get our error and our bearings. So before we had double speed, then we changed it to one and a half speed ratios. Now we can try to change it to three times speed ratios, so 15 to 5, let's say. So forget about the specific numbers that we're using, but now we're doing three times faster on one side than the other to turn. So uh, again, if we just look at it as a turn, we can see <coughs> this would um, trace a much smaller circle. So the, the turn is much sharper. And let's see if that helps us at all with our with our algorithm for line following. And we can see we're starting to see this jittery movement where we're uh, going back and forth, back and forth. Might be easier to see if we're following it more closely. And when we have a sharp turn, we, you know, we're trying our best. We, we do have sharper turns than before. We've gotten a little bit further now. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. You can see a lot of jitter in there. And then when there is a big turn, then it's trying to, it's best to follow the curve and it does a pretty good job, but once it gets back, it, it's not fast enough to, to try to get out of that area and, and correct. So maybe still not, not as good. We'll, we could try, we did a three time ratio between the left and right speeds. We can try a four time ratio now. So for that, maybe we will increase one side, 20 to five, four to one. And see if that helps. Um, we can again see this jittery behavior now where it goes left, right, left, right. As soon as it leaves the line, it wants to go back. As soon as it goes on the line, it wants to go away. And oh, it still has a problem with once there's an inside turn, uh, you know, it wants to turn this way, but by the time it starts to turn, the sensor already passed and is on this side. Um, now again, it's trying to, but it's not completely able to. Eventually it might get into a position where by coincidence it can do it, but we call this um, behavior sort of a failure of this algorithm. We don't really um, consider even if it manages to successfully get out of that turn like here. It's not really doing it in the right way. So we see that even a, a 4 to 1 ratio between the speeds is still not sufficient to uh, do all the sharp turns. So we can try to keep making that ratio uh, bigger and bigger um, by maybe reducing the, the left and right speeds, um, the, the, the slower wheel. So we can cut this in half. Now we have an 8 to 1 ratio. And this is the behavior of an 8 to 1 ratio algorithm. Let's see if it's able to manage um, the sharpest of turns, uh, especially the inside turns. So this one is an inside turn. Oh, it, it didn't even manage to do this one. So even with an eight to one ratio for speed, um, we see still um, the same uh, problem where we saw before where it falls off the line, uh, just like in the four to one ratio. So still that's just not good enough to turn as sharp enough. Uh, now, if we think about the geometry of the turns now, and we're getting so, so, so low here, uh, we can think about um, what happens when we turn this to zero. 
And uh, what we noted before is when you do this, the robot turns just about uh, around the, the stopped wheel. So we can see the geometry of that turn. It looks like this. Right, so that's uh, that's pretty much the smallest turn, uh, smallest circle you can uh, uh, circumscribe uh, for this robot um, uh, by just turning around one, one edge, one wheel. And let's see uh, what that looks like when we when we use this um, type of turn in our algorithm itself. So we'll we'll just lower the speeds on the slowest wheels to zero so that we're just turning around those wheels themselves. Uh, now the, the ratio of, of, of speeds is no longer material at this point. We've just changed the geometry of the turn completely so that we're just shimmying forward. And we can see, uh, again, the left and right jittering movement uh, in, this, in this kind of algorithm. And it was just just good enough to still see the black edges, uh, the black lines edges uh, throughout the entire turn. Now this is the challenging inside turn and we can see it's just good enough to to get by uh, with this kind of geometry. Now if we had any sharper turns we might not be able to accomplish this but with these types of turns um, and this and this robot geometry, given you know the width of the wheels where they are, width of the robot, the length between the two wheels, um, but that type of geometry with uh, rotating about a wheel is just good enough for these types of turns. So there you have it, the two-state line-following algorithm, uh, simply written for this particular robot for this particular challenge, um, using the geometry of the line and using the geometry of the robot, um, this is the, uh, a good solution for that. Um, there might be some better solutions, there might be some worse solutions, uh, but we can see that this uh, clearly does the job of allowing the robot to just stay on the line, uh, even during the sharpest of turns uh, on this particular line. And the robot is able to commit to you know, getting to the end of the line uh, without committing any errors. Follow it one last time as it makes its way. So the last thing I wanted to show you before um, I give you the next challenge is that uh, no matter which side you're tracking of the line, uh, you know one solution should pretty much fit all in a, in a symmetrical um, uh, problem space like this one, where we have the same kind of line, uh, turns um, on the inside and the outside of the line, uh, whether you're going from the right-hand side or the left-hand side. So currently you can see that we're tracking the, the right edge of the line. It almost fell out in that last turn. But we can see that we're tracking uh, the, right, the right edge of the line. So we're always on the right side of the line from the perspective of the robot. And uh, I wanted to just show you that we can do the same thing, uh, be successful, I mean, by tracking the other side uh, for this solution space. So all I have to do is for my algorithm is just to switch these around and now we're turning away from uh, the line towards the left instead of towards the right so that will track the line um, differently from the other side so now we're on this side of the line tracking it um, from the perspective of the robot the left edge and we can see it you know it, it behaves pretty much the same it'll have the same problems on the inside of you know a sharp curve like this over here where it almost falls out of the line but manages to stay within and it will complete the last curve successfully and so you can see that even when we're tracking the opposite side of the line we're, we're pretty much having uh, the same successful solution and the same behavior and it just depends on the geometry of the line of our challenge but um, so like I said there might be cases where you know if you have more sharp turns uh, on the inside from the perspective of the left or the right edges then you, you might want to pick the other edge as your uh, best solution 
Okay, so uh, there you have it, the two line, the two state single color sensor line following algorithm. And for uh, for the next video, um, I will be showing you how to uh, improve on this by using uh, more states in our algorithm. But in order to see improvements, it would be good to sort of gamify um, this challenge. So uh, in order to gamify the challenge, the best way, the best approach is to figure out how fast we can get from this point to that point following the line. <coughs> and the faster the robot does, the better the solution. So uh, we don't have time as one of our uh, tracking points on our sensors, but we do have time block in our uh, control tab. There's a time block. And you can use uh, variables to save the time, the start time at the beginning, just before you do this. And at the end, if you know where the end is, you can uh, compute the end time, subtract the start time from it, and there you have the elapsed time for the algorithm, that it, how long it took it to complete. Now, uh, currently, there's no end to this loop. It'll just uh, could forever um, try to, to, to detect. So we need a, some way to, to stop this loop and be able to, to say that that's when we're successful and that's how much time it took. And so in order to do that, I suggest you can use the GPS sensor. We know that our uh, robot starts in some y equals negative 86 and when it reaches over here, uh, you can test it by just running your robot there, but uh, we know it's roughly at uh, 90, so it goes about uh, uh, 180 centimeters between one and the other. So you can measure, uh, you can test your y against some number and you can say break out of the loop whenever my y crosses a particular um, positive y. So you can make your loop repeat until uh, your y sensor shows a reading greater than a certain amount and at that point you can call it quits and it doesn't really matter what y you use as long as you use the same Y uh, between all your runs. And so if one solution is faster than the other one in reaching that Y, we can call that a better solution. So that's your challenge for the next uh, bit, is to gamify your world and to try to track how long it takes you to reach from one end to the other uh, before you fall down. And then you can stop your robot uh, and record the time that it took you, and then we can uh, we can move on from there in trying to find more better optimized solutions for line following using a single color sensor still. Okay, good luck with that and I'll see you back soon.